Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Georgia Ioannou and I am the Environmental Manager at Bromont Bureau of Shipping. Uh, today I will be talking about environmental compliance in maritime transport. As we all know, global warming is a major problem facing our planet. And in order to reduce our carbon footprint and protect our environment, it is essential that we, keep, we take steps to ensure that all maritime transport is conducted in, in an environmentally responsible manner. Maritime transport is one of the most important uh, forms of transportation in the world. Every year, millions of tons of goods are shipped across the oceans, and this has a significant impact on the environment. As such, it is essential that all vessels operating in EU and in international waters adhere to the existing environmental regulations. These regulations are designed to minimize the environmental impact of maritime transport. Therefore, vessels operating for, uh, com for commercial purposes and not only must comply with all these regulations related to their emissions and thus reducing their fuel consumption and increase their efficiency. Our organization has been established in 2003. For the past 20 years, we serve our clients to ensure safety, continued compliance and performance in a demanding and complex regulatory framework. Our headquarters located in Limassol, and we also have offices in different countries around the world. We maintain our integrated system which fully complies with the ARO code and covers classification and statutory certification of ships on behalf of flag administrations, as well as greenhouse gas emissions verification services. Our services include surveys, inspections, engineering and consultancy, advanced surveys and marine certification. Our name and Dromon comes from a history over 1,000 years ago. The Dromon was a Byzantine warship used from the 6th to the 12th century, and it was the mainstay of the Byzantine navy during this period. It was highly effective and was a major factor in Byzantine Empire's success in the Mediterranean. As an international and independent classification society, our activities consist of the application of our rules, regulations, standards and guidelines for the design, construction and operational maintenance of ships and marine related structures. We are in a position to meet the evolving needs of a rapidly challenging market such as the maritime industry. Our highly trained network of surveyors and auditors can provide on-time and confident service. We are among the first organizations to be accredited under the ISO 14065 and provide worldwide services related to the EU MRV regulation on the monitoring, reporting and verification of CO2 emissions from maritime transport. The EU MRV regulation is an EU regulation that requires ships to collect and report detailed emissions data for carbon dioxide during voyages to and from EU ports. Ships must monitor and report their fuel consumption, CO2 emissions, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and provide additional information such as engine capacity and transport work. The regulation applies to ships over 5,000 gross tonnage entering, leaving, or operating in EU waters. Being involved from day one with the EU MRV regulation, we have developed extensive experience in the verification of environmental parameters and our procedures ensures compliance under the environmental schemes. Following Brexit, the, the UK legislation established the new UK MRV re regime, which is now uh, in place. On September 2021, the UK government released its guidance on the application of the UK scheme for MRV uh, for carbon dioxide emissions. The type of vessels within scope of the UK MRV regime and type of emissions data for collection are the same are, as those under the, the UK MRV regime. The only emissions data required to be reported under the UK MRV regulation 
are for the following voyages between two UK ports, between a UK and a non-EA port, emissions generated within a UK port, i.e. at birth, and between a port in the UK and a port in one of the UK overseas territories or Crown dependencies. The UK has taken a decision to delay the requirement for ship operations to report emissions until a digital solution for reporting is fully operational, which is uh, informally expected in 2025. However, this does not affect the legal requirement for ships operators to monitor vessel emissions and sub submit their emissions for annual verification. As a recognized organization, we also provide services for the IMO data collection system on behalf of flag administrations. The IMO and DCS regulation is a global regulation that requires ships to report data on their fuel consumption and other operational characteristics uh, when they are sailing on international waters, not only uh, for commercial purposes, but for any other reason. The DCS requires ships to, <clears throat> to record, verify, and submit to IMO and GCS platform under the flag administration for each vessel detailed data on their fuel consumption and a few other operational characteristics. Then DCS can also be used to analyze energy efficiency and environmental performance, as well as to identify areas for improved environmental performance of the vessels. We also provide the verification service for the Clean Shipping Index, uh, which is a performance-based initiative that aims to reduce the environmental impact of ships. The scheme encourages shipping companies to improve their environmental performance and reduce their carbon dioxide emissions. Companies that participate in this specific scheme are required to report on their progress every year and are assessed and rated based on their performance. The ratings range from A, which is the highest, to E, which is the lowest. Then benefits for vessels certified under CSI are then differentiated port fees to, <clears throat> to designated ports and differentiated fairways used in Sweden. The Carbon Intensity Indicator is a rating system designed to help ship owners, operators and charterers to make informed decisions about their vessels and their carbon emissions. It is a mandatory measure under MARPOL Annex 6 and came into force on 1st of January 2023. It provides a way of comparing the car carbon intensity of different vessels to help identify the most uh, fuel efficient vessels and those that are most likely to contribute to an overall reduction in carbon emissions. ESG stands for Environmental, Social, Social and Governance and is a framework to, to assess how companies are performing in terms of their social, environmental and governance performance. Companies are measured on their ESG performance to determine their readiness to address global challenges and opportunities. ESG criteria are incorporated into the investment process to evaluate the risk, return and sustainability of investments. For example, a company's environmental performance may be evaluated based on their carbon emissions, water use and waste management. Social performance may be evaluated based on their labor practices, diversity and human rights initiatives. We are pleased to announce that uh, we, Dromon Bureau of Shipping, has partnered with Net Zero Analytics, a leading provider of sustainability solutions to provide a sustainability service to the maritime industry. Through our partnership, we will be providing a range of sustainability advisory services to shipping companies in Cyprus. The European Union Emissions Trading System, the EU ETS, is a market based on a cap and trade system created to reduce the emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. 
It is the world's largest carbon trading system, covering around 40% of EU's total CO2 emissions. It was launched in 2005 and applies to emissions from industrial installations in the energy and manufacturing sectors such as power plants as well as aviation. Companies receive or buy emission allowances which they can trade with one another as needed. They then surrender a number of allowances equivalent to their emissions in order to demonstrate compliance with their obligations. The EU ETS has been successfully in has been successful sorry, in reducing emissions across the EU and is seen as a template for other cap and trade systems worldwide. An agreement has been reached between the European Parliament, the European Commission and the Council of the European Union to include shipping in the EU ETS in, in 2024. From uh, uh, 2024, the EU ETS will include ships above 5,000 gross tonnage transporting cargo or passengers for commercial purposes. Within the EU ETS development, just around the corner, companies will require even more focus on timely submission of data to ensure not only vessel compliance, but also company compliance. Environmental compliance in shipping is increasingly important in today's world. Uh, and is important for shipping companies because of the potential for fine penalties and other consequences if they are found to be in violation of environmental regulations. Additionally, environmental compliance is important because it provides assurance to customers and stakeholders that the shipping industry is doing its part to protect the environment. Thank you for joining me today and have a great day. Thank you.